Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to For the Continuum Conversations, the only quantum grammar talk show that I know of on the internet. I'm your host, Colin Jason Knight from Matthew Cohen Glass. And today's guest is uh, a friend of mine and a student of mine, a uh, full call on Pascal. And I'll just have uh, Pascal, if you could please just introduce yourself with your uh, full punctuated name. Sure. Uh, my name is Paul Colin Pascal Hyphen Matsu Colin Schmidt, and I'm a French Canadian from Ottawa, Ontario. And um, what is it that, uh, if you don't mind sharing, what is it that takes up most of your days uh, on a day to day basis? Uh, well, these days, uh, so I work in the uh, restaurant industry, so I have that job. Uh, and but recently I've decided to focus on uh, studying correct sentence structure. Um, and in the new year, you know, it's been a couple of uh, months since 2000, uh, 2023 rather. And, uh, you know, things change and my focus has turned into actually sitting down with a pen and paper and studying the grammar. So no. I know that uh, you and I have known each other for what, I don't know, maybe known of each other at least for what, two years um, or so yeah. ish. Um, if you don't know, or, or you do know about the live life claim, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm a witness on Pascal's live life claim and uh, he's taken a couple courses from me. So Pascal, I just like to, to get a sense of what is it that like, what was the path that led you or drew you to correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar? If you could outline that for us. Uh, sure. So I actually discovered uh, David, uh, Colin David hyphen Win Colin Miller, his videos during COVID. And uh, it's actually interesting how I discovered him. Uh, so COVID lockdown, I was actually at work no customers doing some cleaning with my uh, listening to podcast. And there's this gentleman online. His name is uh, Ole Demigard. He uh, He's into theories, okay? And uh, he was being interviewed and he mentioned about this other guy on YouTube talking about mortgages and how this guy was saying that all mortgages around the world were null and void and he just threw that out in the interview and i found that interesting so i i found this guy on youtube and it was uh mark kishan christopher ah sitting at podium. right there and i'll okay. say his name is colon mark hyphen lowercase k kishon is that correct is that the one we're talking about yes yes all right please continue so uh you know he was sitting at a podium with some flags and it looks pretty interesting but i i remember being quite fascinating by what he was claiming about you know all debts and all mortgages were void on the planet and so it's through uh it's through the, it's through uh mark kishan christopher that i've discovered david win miller and uh and then i started i started uh listening to david's videos and that's a whole you know there's a lot of content there and so i kind of i kind of dove in there but that's basically how I discovered uh, quantum grammar. I think, you know, for myself included, although uh, my discovery of it took place back in the summer of 2017, a lot of people come to it through Mark Lowercase K, Kishon Christopher, because at least in 2017, he was the only individual out there that was act on YouTube that I knew of that had a base that was actually offering courses uh, with, you know, materials related to quantum grammar. 
And so that's what drew me to it, because when I was trying to learn it, I couldn't find anyone to teach me anything. And so he was kind of the only one out there. And through him, like you, I came to Colin David Eiffelman, Colin Miller, which led me to find out that David had his own personal cell number on his website. And I ended up calling him and, and it went from there. But um, so we went from Mark lowercase k, and then you discovered and started studying Colin David Eiffelwing, Colin Miller's videos. And then by extension, you also, I'm guessing, became aware of David's construct, I'm sure. Have you seen the director's parties uh, videos that he did with uh, Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould, his student? Yep. Yep. I've, uh, I remember seeing those videos. Okay. So now I'd like to ask you, since you went from Mark to David, now I'm going to ask you, how did you hear about me and um, my YouTube channel and what I do? So obviously with David's uh, videos that are hours uh, long, he's got a lot of information in there. So I remember just trying to uh, write down, take notes on, uh, on the grammar stuff that he was mentioning. Uh, but with the uh, YouTube algorithm, you popped up. Uh, with and I remember, you know, videos about the basics, uh, writing your name, uh, and this the actual structure of uh, the equation of correct sentence structure, stuff like that. And so naturally, uh, you go to those, and then uh, that's how I discovered you. And and you've got a whole bunch of videos, so it's. Uh, it was quite nice, you know. It's just a natural progression. What location, approximate location in the now space, do you think that you started watching uh, my channel? What year was that? Would you estimate? Um, that's a good question. I think uh, it was in the middle of COVID. So, gee, I don't know, twenty one, twenty twenty, twenty twenty one. Uh, something like that. Okay, so at that point, I probably had about between 300 and 400 videos up on my channel. So yeah, and then you contacted me via email to apply for the workshops, correct? Yep. Now, forgive my memory. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, over half a century old or so. Um, I don't know how many workshops we've done together, but I'd just like to, you know, unbiased, what is your impression of me as a tutor as far as teaching this grammar goes and, and conduct and things like that? Um, so we've done four workshops together. And uh, I mean, all I have to say is that uh, you keep your word. Uh, you, you are with the honor. Uh, and there's a certain, uh, to be honorable in your contracts, and in your day-to-day -day living, you got to stick to the business, right? Uh, but uh, you're just a stand-up guy. <laughs> um, and uh, I can, you know, I sensed it since the beginning. So I, right away, I knew that you were, uh, uh, you were on YouTube for the correct reasons, for basically doing what you were saying you were doing, teaching the grammar. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so in those workshops that we do, now, ladies and gentlemen, these are confidential workshops. So what's in the workshop between Pascal and I we won't be discussing here, but we can discuss generalities about them. Like I try to find a way to describe the way they work, all right? So it's sort of like, and from my end of it, it's I look at it as you're walking into a classroom and I'm teaching. However, you're the only one in there. And however fast or slow you're motivated to go or wherever you're at, I try to meet you 
on that geometric level playing field of knowledge cultivation and sort of not not spoon feed you but guide you to the closures that you're willing or motivated to reach for now do you now that's my end now from your end is that an accurate assessment or do you feel some you know that something different was happening no i think that's accurate um what i would say is that it's it's for sure an adjustment to for the student to make um because i think it takes a long time to grasp uh, the material as well as how to study it. Um, I mean, it's easy to say that it's straight, you, you know, that the, the technology is, I'd say it's, is it sim it's simple, but complex at the same time. But um, I know what you're trying to articulate yeah. there, because me being when I was a student myself of, of learning it, it was it seemed so complex to me at the beginning it was so difficult for me to do it and to try and learn it and i almost gave up so many times but it seemed like i reached certain epiphanies until it finally clicked and then i was like one of those hand of the forehead things where how simple is this it's just really simple exactly well just a, just 2 weeks ago i had an epiphany where I got to the next, the next level of understanding of writing a correct sentence structure. Um, and it's just motivated me to continue. So I've actually taken uh, your advice that I've heard you say about doing it every day. Uh, even if I'm at work on my break time, I'm my my cognition is working and I'm I'm hitting you know I'm hitting that wall of of learning where okay this is the next thing that I don't get so how do I solve this problem and um, you are available uh, on other platforms for me to ask questions I just have to learn how to uh, uh, reach out, and I do have to say that um, I understand how a lot of people might find you. Um, uh, uh, forgot the word there, uh, intimidating, because uh, it's just the level of knowledge or the. Um, it's just daunting for a lot of people uh, to straighten up and contact you and say, okay, let's, uh, I want to contract with you and be a uh, 2T. But it's, I, I get how it daunting it is for a lot of people. And I, I get why there's so many lurkers on YouTube that don't, don't say anything <laughs> and they have a, they have a, a pseudonym, right? Um, because it's the it's like light shining, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I've wrestled with that. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because I've wrestled with that, and I've brought it to the attention of the community on my YouTube channel, where I've mentioned that people say that about me. And now that I've you know, with more knowledge and people such as yourself uh, sharing those types of perceptions, that it's not. I don't think it's so much me it's just that most people don't appear to they're, they're not used to someone being so direct about something all the time which is the way my style of teaching this it's sort of a vetting process where if each, each you know the way that i communicate with you or anyone else is part of the vetting process where if you for whatever reason lack the capacity to be able to put one foot in front of the other to move toward your goal, well, then it, that's a safety issue and you're probably not ready yet until you're ready to take this step or that step and then I'll be there to, to help you along. But you, you have to take the step. I can't take it for you. I guess that's the way I, uh, you know, from my end. 
I don't think it's me. I just think it's the way the stuff's presented. What would you say about that? I agree. Um, well, this is about correctness, right? So it takes in the in the fiction. It I've you know in the fiction we claim we all claim that we all claim to do the right thing. Oh, you know, but we, we don't, we don't uh, do what we say. Uh, and I, I, I would like to add that because this technology is still is in its infancy or very early, and we're coming from these two individuals, David and Russell, uh, for the newbie or the newcomer, just like I was so confused about what do you do with this and who do I believe, you know, I, I, I also considered joining the community because, uh, because, I mean, Russell was David's uh, student, so why not? believe him or stuff like that and thanks to you 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 were able you're able to uh, help with the cognition of of that you know talking about um, honor and grace well that's that's one thing that I uh, as soon as I discovered uh, balance of the honor and grace, uh, maintenance of the rule one, rule equal, and position or sort uh, the position of peace and neutrality. When mm -hmm. I saw when I saw those concepts written down coming from I saw it coming from you. That's when I said, "Ooh, that's where that's the cherry on top." That proves to me that you know there's the value of the uh of of the technology right there i agree because much like you that's when i was learning it in 2017 uh in the beginning of 2018 and i was watching colin david i and colin miller videos and speaking with him and i was also communicating with colin russell hyphen j colin gould these men to me were like rock stars okay and to be able to speak with with David on the phone, um, I don't know if you ever uh, was were blessed to be able to do that, but I was able to do it a, a you know a few times. His char his charisma came through the phone. Like you, the guy has charisma for days, and you can feel the kindness in all of that. But anyways, the point I'm making is that I was sort of awestruck, like mm -hmm. starstruck, and the same thing. With Russell, when I was communicating with him via email, I felt the same way about him. And I really wanted to join his construct and work with him. And at the time, you know, I was like, you know, we should all join together and, and, and fight the, the system and all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. right? Until I began digging a little deeper and asking certain questions. And then when I started doing that, and utilizing my knowledge and utilizing those principles that you mentioned, that's when he started backing away. And that's when he stopped talking to me, Russell, I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I realized that something was rotten in Denmark. Now, before we go into any of that, I'd like to switch gears here a little bit, speaking of something rotten in Denmark, and go back to the reasons why you wanted to learn this grammar, what inspired you to do that, because I know, you know, via our friendship that you shared with me that you had participated with or at least witnessed walk down to the Capitol or whatever, wherever you are to see what was going on. Those convoy uh, gatherings, uh, I don't know what other way to say it, protests or whatever against the Canadian government having to do with uh, uh, truckers and shipping, I think. Would you like to share your experiences with that? Sure, yeah. Uh up here we call it the convoy right and uh it really split the country up in terms of opinion mm -hmm. um 
people for and people against. And um, I was I was privileged enough to I was I was privileged sorry I was privileged enough to live uh, and work. The convo was in between my domicile and where I worked. So I was going through there every day. <laughs> and, uh, and this was obviously at the end of COVID when people were starting to get tired of it, of the restrictions. Because um, Canada was a little, it took longer for us to uh, lift the restrictions. But anyways, it was just a breath of fresh air uh, in terms of uh, emotion, emotionally, right? And, uh, you know, the atmosphere was very positive and great. People were hugging. I mean, people were really nice um, outside. And, and so I joined, uh, I joined that and I had a great time. And so, but at the very end, where when the police basically removed the truckers and all the people there uh, by force, you know, the strong arm, mm -hmm. uh, I just I decided not to participate in that event uh, simply because I've 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 been to protest. A long time ago, I've been there and I've I've dealt with uh, the right police and all that, you know, all that the mess, you know, and that makes me think of uh, jumping in the mud with the pigs, you know, uh, <laughs> not uh, by and I don't mean. The I know. I know you don't mean <laughs> that. All right. I got you. No but, offense uh, meant to any no uh, peace to, officers. To police, out. No. Yeah, in fact, during the convoy, the police were walking around and, and uh, some of them were supportive and very nice. And, uh, but I knew myself that I wasn't going to participate in, uh, in, in the, the confrontation, right? And so uh, that's basically what happened. And it's, you know, it hurt. It hurts to see the level of anger that people had, right? And I understand how it was a disruption. And if I were, if I were the leader of the convoy, well, I would have changed things around. Um, but it, you know, at the end of the day, it's. I don't want to be blunt about it, but it's like children complaining to their parents. It's I want this, I want I want it now. Give right. it to me, mm -hmm. right? And you're asking, you're asking for. Uh, uh, it's a these are privileges that can be taken away from you, and it's the the opposite is being autonomous, right? Autonomy. That's what I try to explain to people about rights. People that get stuck on this fiction concept of rights. Rights come from an authority. Like here in the past tense United States, a lot of people, patriots, talk about the Constitution where you have the right to free speech, uh, the right to arm bears, or I mean the right to bear arms. Uh, those are rights that are given by this piece of paper. So that piece of paper then would be their authority. But that if they're given to you, then they can be taken away. As you said, you use the word privileges instead. And so there is no such thing. They're arbitrary. And when you have a protest, that's a no test. PRO means no. So like you said, it's just like little children screaming and throwing a temper tantrum until their parents finally throw them a bone or something, give them a little piece of candy, and then they'll go away and shut up until the next time. You know, that's basically what it is. Now, what I'd like to do is ask you what was the conclusion or end result of these protests? Did anything change? Uh, did something positive come out of it other than the brotherhood and sisterhood that you witnessed and experienced there with 
your fellow mankind, which is a plus in any theater, legislatively or anything like that, did anything positive come out of it? Any positive changes to the, the way things were done? No, no, no. So there you have it. I mean, that's what a protest does. I mean, one thing I, it did change it. You saw the true colors of people and the government, right? Um, but you know, people, I knew that before, mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of real change, eh, you know, I don't think so. There never really is. I mean, people say that still participate with voting and things like that in a system. Like again, here in the past tense United States, we have two main political parties, Democrats and the Republicans. You have the Democrats and the Republicans, they're both two hands belonging to the same head. It's a Hegelian dialectic. And each mm -hmm. of the people that participate with these political parties uh, participate with the condition of state that I call protagonist-centered morality, where on the left, you have this guy who's your hero or whatever. And even if he does things wrong, you're still going to back them no matter what. Because you have protect, they are your protagonist. So your morality shifts with regards to what they're doing, or the guy on the right, who's you know making America great again. Which I don't know when America was great to begin with. I'm not quite sure what they're referring to with that. But you see what I'm saying? It's it's to my perception, it's the fiction system, just like the protests, giving the illusion that the citizens have some say in what goes on mm -hmm. when really it's just all about money and control and is life better today than it was five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago or a hundred years ago. <laughs> you, you know, if you play the tape the whole way through, you will get a clearer picture of what's really going on. Yeah. Well, I'm hearing you speak and all I can hear is, or all I can think in my head is theater, right? It's one big theater. And uh, when I use the word thing. theater, theater is actually a military term. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I've heard the term, uh, 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 what is it? War theater or? Yeah, like the theater in, yeah. Uk in the Ukraine. You yes. know, that's a theater. Uh -huh. Theater in Afghanistan or Iraq or wherever. Yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is, military. And what is the military industrial complex? It's a business. Mm -hmm. The business is booming. So let's bring it back around to the grammar. Mm -hmm. Now, you have your live life claim in place. Have you created any other documents, any other document contract postal vessel court venues that you'd like to share with the audience? I haven't created well i've uh i've only started uh on the the c the c pass sorry it's been a while but i've been uh starting to draft them and putting concepts in you know oh what i want to put in and then one by one putting them in but uh no the live live claim is the only uh document that i have and just to explain, to give clarity to the, to the audience, in the fiction, the fiction system, the plain English adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, uh, babel system, you have a birth certificate. In the system of fact, correct sentence structure, you have a claim of the live life. In the fiction, you have a passport. In the fact, you have a C pass C treat. So on and so forth uh, down the line. And one thing I'd like to bring up is what happened. I don't like to say the words, the trigger words too much. The medical scenario that happened over the past couple of years here. That when, if you listen back to those Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller videos, he talks about ship's papers, having to have those in order. Live life claim, CPAS, C treaty. 
postmaster badge, whatever it is that you're using to navigate from point A to point B. And then he said, you have to get medical papers, but you get these medical papers from the fiction. You have to get, um, well, he, he didn't say you have to, but he suggested that you go to a doctor and have them declare you fit to board a vessel, meaning you're in such physical and mental shape that you can go on board a boat, a ship, and travel safely. You're seaworthy, so to speak. I don't know if you're familiar with that concept. I've heard, I've heard him mention that, yes, in his videos. But there is no correct sentence structure counterpart to that. It's jurisdiction from the fiction. And I wanted to bring this up. I brought it up maybe once before. I'm not sure, but I just start to start repeatedly bringing it up from different angles is the fact that this is the way the fiction can get someone like me or someone like you if we don't know what we're talking about when we use this technology because there is no correct sentence structure medical document with authority that says that we are sane or not. The fiction has jurisdiction over that. David even said that, not in, so, not in those words. So if you go start talking crazy and you don't have closure on it, you can't explain what it is you're talking about. You don't know what an adverb is. You don't know what syntax is. You don't know the mathematical interface or how to explain it. If you don't know those things, then they're just going to say, they're crazy, lock them up. And that's how they can get you. That's why you see those things happen when they have those standoffs and they put them in the loony bin because they don't know what they're doing. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about, those scenarios? Yes, yes. That's how they do it. That's why I, you know, people are probably sick of me saying this, but you, you have to know this stuff in order to use it successfully and be safe. You have to know it well enough to be able to teach someone else on the spot under duress and be calm about it. And I think you mentioned, <clears throat> I've heard you say uh, the importance of being understood and making sure that people understand what you're conveying. That's a that's another aspect. You can't just you can't just convey convey stuff and expect people to understand you. You have to make sure they understand. Correct. And that, that is, uh, I'll just be straight up with it. That is the attitude, at least back when I was communicating with them, that the uh, entity called the Red Thumb Club, that's the way that they navigated, where they would just write up their own quantum gobbledygook document and send it to the fiction and expect the fiction to be able to understand that. And if the fiction didn't or anyone didn't understand it, then they'd say, well, that's not my problem. You have to learn. You have to get educated. No, no, that's not how it works. Because if you look at a fiction court, all right, a foreign vessel and dry dock, if you look at the way those things navigate, when you go in there, if you don't speak the language, for example, if I'm, uh, I don't know, I speak Portuguese or something and I walk in, or I speak French and I walk into an English speaking court, they will provide a translator for me. OK, so it's the same thing with you and I. If we're going to use correct sentence structure, we are the translators. That is why I brought to the table when I write a correct sentence structure document contract, post the vessel court venue, I translate it into plain, simple English. So there can be no misunderstanding. So everything is cognizable to the best of my knowledge and ability to articulate that. Does that make sense? Total sense, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do things the way I do. And because I'm not here to be misunderstood, I'm not trying to be above anybody or below anybody. I level the field. And if you want to participate with it, you can come to the field. If you don't, you can go on vacation. That's pretty much the long and short of it. So speaking of that, do you have any plans for correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, as it relates to your practical everyday life like do you have any projects you're thinking about doing or anything like that um well 
I think the main reason why how I'd like to why I'm learning this is to safeguard my my wealth and my family's wealth. Uh, but more, but uh, I'd also like to travel and use it um, to cross borders. Uh, I, you know, I think I'll something I'd like to consider. Yeah. So, as it relates to that, then if that's what your volition is to do, then I suggest a line of study relating to shipping and salvage. Because I think what another misconception that people have about this is that you can, I don't have my C pass here with me, but you can, people think that you can just use a C pass to go through a TSA checkpoint. That is not the case. <laughs> What it does or what you can do with your seat pass or your live life claim is tow those fiction documents as salvages. You can tow your passport as a salvage. You can tow your birth certificate as a salvage, um, a driving license as a salvage, whatever you want, as long as you know those mechanics. Um, are you familiar with that concept? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. So um, I think I'll, there's a lot of sentiment out there um, that they just want to remove the fiction out of their lives completely right and just ignore it where the concept of towing these derelict vessels um, like your passport and your id card that makes a lot more sense you're you're saying these are incorrect i have my these are incorrect i'm towing them as salvage Mm -hmm. here but i do have the correct documentation so you're able to navigate just like normal but you still have the standing of of being or having the correct documentation and that's why i use the terminology stewardship mm. just like this physical vessel that you see i didn't create it okay I don't know who created it. I know my parents had a hand in it, but just like, you know, my mother can go into a kitchen and cook up a dish and say, well, if I put this much salt in, it's going to taste like this. If I put this much pepper in, it's going to taste like this. She didn't do that with me. She didn't say, if I do this or that, you know, he's going to have brown eyes and then he's going to have this color hair. You, there's no nothing conscious really involved in that. It's just a process that happens that is not really explicable to my knowledge. So therefore, it's this isn't mine. So I'm a steward of it, though. And just like that, you know, a driving license, I'm a steward of that as well. I tow it as a salvage because that's not my copyright copy claim name on it. Uh, I didn't create that name birth certificate i didn't have anything to do with that i didn't autograph it i didn't authorize it authorship authority means you're an author of what it is that you're taking authority of in a very practical sense if you think about it so that's why i told it as a salvage and if someone until such time as someone comes along and claims that salvage i'm towing it as a salvage so that i can prevent shipwrecks or any damage occurring to anyone now i've been towing it for a salvage for a long time the year and a day timeline drogue has long since passed so no one's ever going to come forward and claim it uh, but i hope that uh hope that added a little bit more knowledge to your base there yes and i mean i'll I'm, i'll say that the word just the word st stewardship uh this is why for me it's taken me a long time to get a grasp of how to navigate in how to navigate in my uh, to study this stuff because it's completely rewiring the way I think because you don't we don't own anything right but we're stewards ah there's the word so it's it's finding the 
finding these new terms with the correct definition, which changes the way you view the world. And just like we're stewards of the planet and, mm -hmm. and we have to take care of it. That, so that's in line with uh, <clears throat> the, just like the Native American beliefs, like the Ten Commandments uh, that you drafted. Uh, I do believe it's the Native American Ten Commandments. It's the First Nation uh, First Ten Com Commitments. Yeah. Commitments, yes. So just that's in line with that. And so if you stay, you know, if you stay long enough, you discover that things are making sense and the autonomy of each individual can, is that, you're laying the field, the fields are being laid for a correct world, if I can be so colorful. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever parsed the word world, but you have people that say, be the change you want to see in the world. And when you parse the word world, it goes back to the nativity root meaning of man. Okay. So if you want to see something different in the world, then you must work on the man in order to do that. And I was just having a conversation about this with my own tutor, uh, Colin Raven, hyphen Farhad, hyphen Tahiti, Colin Efrin, and we both agreed that when you see these groups of people out there that say things like, "We want to help people," we want to help the people. That's usually a red flag and it signals that there's a, some sort of money-making thing going on because from my experience in the last, you know, over five years of doing this and teaching hundreds of people and all the blah, 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 um, that the one true way that this is successful is to do it uh, man or woman by man or woman basis, one person at a time, one individual at a time. And then when you learn it, Pascal, and people see you performing in your biosphere, they see you doing stuff with it. The people that are open to it and receptive to it will be magnetized and be drawn to it and be like, how, how can I do that? You know, and then you will begin teaching them and then exponentially person by person, it will increase. But it's never, mm -hmm. I've never, with my experience, it doesn't work in a group or community. Community, You get a bunch of people together, you get what you have with the Red Thumb Club or the Syntax Learning Center or the Purple Thumb Community or or I don't know what Mark Lowercase K call, he calls his uh, little group over there. Well, actually, it's not a little group. It's a pretty big group. Yeah. But you get things like that. And it just doesn't work. Well, my personal opinion about those groups is that if we're coming, we're coming from the fiction, so it makes total sense that the fiction or we, uh, as people in the fiction, will take something and twist it around because we're confused. So it's, it's only natural that these groups pop out from this technology. Uh, it does muddy the water, but um, it's not, in my opinion, it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be hard to get to the truth. It's always hard to get to the truth. And only the ones who are wise enough and can decipher through all the mud will find themselves right and know what to do right that's how i always see it the minute you start how can i phrase this so you have an individual a very galvanizing uh riveting personality such as colin russell i have j colin gould who if you've never seen him before in your life and don't know anything about him, does possess a certain type of charisma, definitely nowhere near the same type as, as his uh, mentor, David. But he does have a certain type of charisma. And 
it tends to draw people that will just take him at his word. They don't need evidence of what he's done. They just believe that he did it. And once you start doing that, once you start participating with an opinion as a fact, you're confusing opinion with fact, <clears throat> that just lays open a whole mess. of Then, then you can be controlled. It's mm. a psyop. I mean, all grammar and language is a psyop, but I mean, it is a psy psychological operation. If you can lay a ground rule for yourself that you will not participate with a belief as a fact, that you need certification no matter who you are, unless, of course, you know, we're family. And of course, I'm going to believe what you say because I know you. But if I don't know you, I'm not going to take you at your word. If it's a, a claim that's a serious thing that matters in my life day to day, I'm going to need evidence for what you're saying. And it's the same thing with the grammar. If you're going into those dangerous, situations and you're making claims with correct sentence structure you have to be able to back those up you have to be able to have that closure and that knowledge because they're not just going to believe you they're going to want to see if you do know what you're talking about and what i've found pascal is that you know looking into their the vasily's eyes is that even if they don't know what i'm talking about they can tell that i know what i'm talking about and it causes a certain type of kuleana with them. And they just 9.9 .9 times out of 10, just let me go about my business and leave me alone. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see if we covered everything here. So just to double check, are there any projects you have in the works that you, you foresee you may be going after in the future to do with quantum grammar? Um. Well, it, perhaps maybe, uh, well, I, I do have to get my documents uh, drafted and uh, created. Um, but uh, eventually it'd be nice to teach the grammar, uh, but we'll see. That's awesome. I once had a volition to do a correct sentence structure college online where I thought that I could do like an online school thing, but that's just uh, impractical with just me. So if individuals such as yourself, you know, once you get complete 100% closure on it, would start teaching and stuff, then we could get, you know, we already have, there's Colin Ricardo, Colin Marseille, who... I certify and stand behind. He has closure on the grammar. He's capable of teaching it. Because someone like you, um, if you get to that point, then you can start teaching. Then we have more than one correct teacher out there. And then we could perhaps move forward with something like that. Would that be something that you'd be interested in? Yeah, well, of course. Awesome. Well, it was fun talking with you, my friend. I appreciate you coming on the show today. Well, thank you very much. It was nice. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll keep in touch with you and uh, maybe, you know, in a few months or whatever, maybe some, ex you know, super exciting events will happen in the world and we'll have more things to talk about. And uh, of course, it's always great to have success stories. So once you start moving forward and getting those documents filed in and moving forward, maybe we can talk again and talk about those things. How about that? That sounds great. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. My friend and student, Pascal, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the talk show. And we'll see you in the next one. Good night. That about does it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, Thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. 
hit the like button turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because i do post on a very consistent basis there are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel my gift to you my fellow mankind thank you again and i'll see you in the next one